Good Friday morning, guys. My name is Jerry Miller, and welcome to Real Talk here on the I Love Seville Network. We are live in Charlottesville, across Albemarle County, Central Virginia, the Commonwealth, the country, and the world, right here on the I Love Seville Network, and we're presented by Yes Realty Partners. Say it loud, say it proud. Yes Realty Partners. And our friend, Keith Smith, the media mogul. Keith Smith. Media mogul. Where, where did that come from? Why don't we go to the two shot and welcome the distinguished gentleman to the program? Oh, the channel, I don't. The now we're right. finishing each other's sentences yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Keith Smith on NBC Twenty Nine yesterday and this morning. I, yeah, they called me for an interview on rent increases and where the rental market's going, and um, I was honored to uh, to sit in front of a camera and talk. You did a hell of a job, and, and it's a startling statistic. Year over year, a 13% increase in rents um, in the greater Charlottesville area. That is that is substantial. It, it is substantial, um, and each jurisdiction is a little bit different. <clears throat> you know, some a little high, some a little low. Excuse me for a second. <coughs> A little higher and a little lower. Yeah. Um, uh, on that end of it, but over overall, and and what um, what kind of caused the interview uh, in the pre conversation with, and I've forgotten the uh, reporter's name. Um, as uh, she says, it's it was like a four percent. I go, uh, uh, no, no, no. So I supplied her with the data of of what it was looking at, and a shout out to Suzanne Real and and Allied Property Management for helping me put that data together plus i pulled some stuff off a car and apartments.com and so forth and so on but did a quick analysis uh first quarter over first quarter and it's well over double digits across the board i mean considerable increase in rents um and and it really took me aback but we know it's as as the distinguished gentleman put it in the article it's uh, it's economic supply and demand 101. It's yeah, as simple yeah. as that. We you don't know, have enough homes. I didn't think I just spoke. Go <laughs> figure, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and it turned into news. Yeah, who knew, right? Who knew? Uh, but uh, I don't even remember exactly what I said. What did I say? You, they, they, you said it smart. I said it smartly. Yeah. yeah. It, look, it's economics 101, right? Supply and demand. Yeah. There's just not enough apartments to meet the needs. Apartments, single family detached or rentals, single family attached rentals. You know, it's about, it's kind of about what we're going to talk into because I spent uh, six hours looking over sales end of it on, on recent, you know, on, on homes, on purchases over the last uh, one quarter, this last quarter versus the quarter of 2021 and um, broke it down into all the jurisdictions to include Waynesboro and, and Stanton. The short version of all this paper in front of me is... The man loves notes and paper. I, I do. I love notes and paper. You know, you can't, you know, can't get the developer out of me, you know, killing trees and stuff like that. But I, I you know, I just need it. I can't, it's my age. I can't do the computer thing. I've got to have notes in front of me. And You're always prepared, and, and my friend. It. Bill yeah. McChenzie, hello. Kevin hey, Nancy, Bill. hello. Hey, Bill. Hey, Kevin. I had a great conversation yesterday with Kevin. Uh, uh, we, uh, we, we connected uh, via the phone, and we almost became brothers from another mother. We were the the, the king of Waynesboro himself, Kevin Yeah, Nancy. yeah, yeah. We we had a chat on the phone yesterday, and I appreciated the heck out of every moment of it. It was a great conversation. It's it's really neat when you do this, and then you get to connect with really neat people and 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 learn a little bit. I learned a little bit about him, and I learned a little bit about different markets. And we also turned out that we were in the same places at the same time. And 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 it was pretty cool, man. Enjoyed the conversation. The man knows Waynesboro and the Shenandoah Valley inside and out. Yeah, we, we we were talking the other side of, other side of the other side of the mountain. Um, which, if we want to jump into that, yeah, let's do it. If we want to jump into it, um, so uh, Augusta Augusta County. Right, that's just the county. Um, there were 18, first quarter versus second quarter, there was 18 less units sold uh, quarter over quarter, you know, year over year. Uh, 2022 was 175. Uh, 2021 was 195. The days on market was actually equal, eight and eight. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to look at was what the list prices versus sold prices, what was the percentage differences across the board? And on, in, in Augusta County, um, in 2022, the, the, the actual sold, median sold was 290. This year, last year, it was 260. So it's a 30 grand jump. 
Okay. Which is pretty substantial. Substantial. But it was interesting. The medium list in Celt was, was neutral. They were actually zero. Some of the other jurisdictions, they were substantially higher, and we can dig into that a little bit. But I'll, I'll be honest with you. The only, out of all the jurisdictions, all the, the only one that, the only, there's only two areas I looked at that actually had a gain year over year in volume and number of units. One was Albemarle County, new construction, single family detached. There was 11 more units sold. And the second one was um, on the other, was actually Green County. Green County, new construction was up three. It wasn't much, but it was, everything else had negative numbers. The total of all the jurisdictions I just talked about were 31 units below where we were this time last year. It's something you predicted. That's what we talked about. Do you want to know what the largest number was? The, the largest delta. Albemarle County. Talk to us about year over year, Albemarle County. This is no new construction, so I took new construction out because it kind of skews the numbers, and I broke those down separately. There are 71 units less sold. So somebody, I didn't do percentage, so somebody who's smarter than me can do that. This quarter, 20, 222 Units, so these are closed. These are actually closed recorded transactions. Uh, last year it was 293, so that's a delta, a negative delta of 71. So Year over year, Q1 versus Q1. 71 units. And that's feels, substantial. And it feels like that out there, right? Oh, for you sure. Know? So it, it, it's out there and it's doing it. Um, interesting, uh, we were 50 grand higher on the median sales price. In Albemarle County, uh, 460 versus 410. 460 this year, 410 um, last year. On that end of it, um, the largest jump was new construction in Albemarle County, by the way. That was a $66,000 jump, but we were also 13 units off. So we've been talking about this for a while. Um, I wanted to put some numbers to it. Uh, you know, I don't want to bore everybody with six hours of, of notes and crunching and to go ahead and do that. But, you know, we've been talking about this and it's happening. Um, <clears throat> the volume of sales are starting to drop. Some of, some of them substantial, some of them not so much, right? It's the city of Charlottesville, um, the, the new construction doesn't really impact Charlottesville at all, but that only dropped eight units um, quarter versus quarter. So it was this year was 98, last year was uh, 106. Hold it. Yeah. 98 versus 106 is eight. I want to make sure my math was right there for a second. <laughs> Spreadsheet don't lie on that end of it. So, um, and they were $24,000 up um, year over year. In other words, last year it was 424, excuse me, this year was 424, last year was 400. Interesting, um, there was a 2.7% increase in list price versus sold price in the city of Charlottesville. So people are, are paying a little bit more than what the sales, the list price was. Um, but I, when I did this, I was expecting to see some really large percentage differences on it. And the, you know, in other words, what the list price was versus the sales price. We hear about these, these homes going over list price by these large numbers. And really, other than new construction, those were in the 6 and in the 7% year over year difference between list price and sales price. And that's because of materials. Most of them were in the 1.5 to 2%, 2.5% on the highest level on that. So it's really not happening. You hear this, you know, homes are selling for a substantially above asking price or list price. And, and, and I'm not tracking that here. That, that may be an anomaly right now. It may catch up on the second quarter. But um, that was the two things I wanted to look at. I wanted to look at what, what was listed versus what sold, right? What was the percentage difference went over listing price? And where's the volume going, the, the volume of actual sales going? Let's, hi, let's say hi to our friend, Maggie Gunnels. Hey, Maggie, how you doing? Watching the program. Hello, Maggie. Vanessa Parkhill, the queen of Earliesville. Hello, welcome to the program. Ray Cadell, we love when you watch the show, my friend. So I'll throw this to you. While we may not be seeing the homes trading for substantially above asking price. So let, let me stop there for a second. This is median. So this is dropping out the stuff that's really high and the stuff that's really low. I'm hitting in the middle here on what, what, what's doing that. Absolutely. I will throw this. The asking prices are checking in considerably higher, though. While they're not trading higher than asking price, it's still commanding top dollar for asking when they go on the market. 
Yeah, so so what you're asked what you're saying is is what is the list price jump year over year? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So that is true, right? Yeah. So um in so for instance, I'm just looking at the city of Waynesboro, right? Um this year the median list price, the median list price was two thirty. Last year was one ninety, so it's a forty thousand dollar. I mean that's jump. that's that's tremendous. Yeah, yeah. It, the actual sold was a little bit less. It was thirty six thousand because um, because of uh, probably some seller financing, seller credits, or something along those lines. But it's awfully darn close to to that. So that end of it. So so year over year lists have grown tremendously. But what I was looking at is what and, you know in in the city of Waynesboro. Literally, what the li median, what the list price was in this first quarter versus what it sold was flat. So there wasn't a lot of appreciate, a lot of upticking from listing to sold. Does that make sense? Oh, that makes perfect sense. That's great data. Great but analysis. You're, but right you're 100% right. Um, the the largest. We want to know what the largest jump was on list list and sold. What jurisdiction? What jurisdiction and what product type? Mm. And no cheating because I sent this to you. No, 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 no. <laughs> Tell me. It's my home. My home. Fulvana? County. Fulvana County, new construction. This is. I'm only looking at new construction. Last year, last year, first quarter, the median list price was two ninety nine. The median list price this first quarter was three ninety. That's a ninety one thousand dollar jump. The sold even went higher. The sold was this first quarter. The median sales sold price for new construction in Fulvana County was three ninety three. Last year was two ninety eight. Where's that new construction happening in Fulvana? So most, so some of those big jumps are in Lake Monticello, but but there are you know uh, outside of Lake Monticello, there's a couple of subdivisions that are do, that are doing it uh, that are selling on the end of it. I can tell you when I took a deeper dive into this. Um, there there were some new constructions this time last year, and I double checked it. We're selling in the two high two nines, you know, two hundred ninety three hundred thousand dollars. That same product is selling for this th almost a hundred thousand dollars more. Yeah, and you know that's the the fact of new construction, and they're moving. There was um, they're a little off. Uh, new construction in Fulvana County was twenty four this first quarter. Last was. 33, so we're around nine units, nine units off. Not a huge number, but it's it's a little bit off. <clears throat> but um, yeah, that that that's the biggest jump I've I've seen at this point. I think the next biggest one <clears throat> was green new construction at 60, 64,000. Um, I, I I apologize, Louisa new construction was seventy eight thousand dollar jump year over year. What well, you could buy new construction this time last year versus um, this year. Kind of flat on their volume was 39 units sold this quarter, 41 last quarter. So it's only about two units, two units off. And it's also interesting, the median list versus a sold was also flat. There was not a big differential between the two. But so I thought that'd be a good way to start off today. Oh, it's fantastic. Good morning, um, Daniel Pettit. Dan Pettit, we love you, my friend. Um, it's very, um, so let's cut to the chase. Less inventory in the market, and the less inventory that's on the market is selling at price points that are higher than ever before. Correct, and if you take a look at the news yesterday, I think mortgage rates uh, jumped up to, to four and a change, right? Yeah. Four, I, I don't want to- High fours. Numbers. High fours, I can't remember the exact number because I don't have it on my notes. All right, <laughs> let me see if I can do a quick search yeah, on I that. Yeah, I think it was four, and you can reach out to Scott. I think it was- Ross Mortgage, yeah, Scott I Morris. I believe it was over four and a half percent. It, it, it was a, a jump on that. That's a uh, substantial, um, I mean, so we, we have seen, uh, Dan Pettit wants to know, all detached homes there, Keith? So which, I've, I've got broken down, detached, attached, so it, the, the question is, is which jurisdiction? Some jurisdictions, like Fulvana County, the attached product doesn't really, there's so little of them, it doesn't it skew the, the delta, <clears throat> the math on it so much. <clears throat> but in Albemarle County, I broke it out um, for attached and, and detached, particularly in new construction. Um, so D-Mac, Daniel McDougall says, good morning from Fluvanna. Hey, Fulvana County. Fulvana County is County. well representing right now. I'm getting texts from people in Fulvana County asking me questions. Fulvana County in the house. There you go. Um, which <clears throat> jurisdiction surprised you the most of all the data points you collected? It's got to be Fulvana. Fulvana new construction. It didn't surprise me because look. Well, we, you're in the business. We keep track of yeah, this stuff right. on a daily basis. Okay, let me rephrase. Which one, when you looked at the data, were like, 
No. Yeah, so I, so I will tell you the album Albemarle County 71 down. I knew it was down. I didn't think it was down 71, and I didn't do the percentage difference on that, but um, if somebody out there wishes to do the math, this year was 222. Um, last year was 290, so it's a 71 difference. I, I, I didn't do the math difference on what the percentage down of sales uh, uh, was it on top of it. But that, that kind of hit me. A little bit. I knew. I knew we were looking at. I knew we were looking at some negative numbers. Um, I mean, you're looking at 25 percent there. I think it's. Is it exactly? Is it maybe 20, even, 25 and change? Yeah, I was think. I was thinking closer to 30, but I. That's in my head. I'd have to get a calculator. Yeah, back of the napkin. Get to go ahead and. I go mean, ahead. that is that is. We, we we saw. We we predicted this. We saw the uh, the inventory that would otherwise have come on the market this year go on the market last year as people were opportunistic and took advantage of the the roller coaster ride that was 2021. So I missed something earlier for our dear friends in Waynesboro. Waynesboro is one of the jurisdictions that are up in volume. So this is um, to answer Dan's question. There's not a substantial single family attached impact on it. And there was not a substantial new construction when I was taking a deeper dive into this. But first quarter this year, 100 sold. First quarter last year, 69. So it's a $31,000 jump. Um, the increase year over year in uh, sales price was 36000 So we're running about 230 right now. Last year, it was around 194 on, on that end of it. So there's a $36,000 jump. But they, like we've been predicting, that's, um, that's kind of where everybody's going because that's where that price point price point is so th that's that's the one that's up um Albemarle county new construction single family detaches up by 11 and green county new construction is up by three and that's it every other jurisdiction is got a negative number in front of it year over year as far as volume goes number of units being so fantastic data right there comments coming in fast and furious daniel mcdougall interest rates have risen in the past 12 weeks at the fastest pace since 1994 wall street journal i'm looking at the article right now in That's front of me um 30-year mortgage rates rise to 4.67 percent the highest 4.67 percent the highest rates um since December 2018. Mm. Yeah, so, you know, for those who are in the biz, you know, uh, you know, the, it's difficult to make transactions happen, period, right? Because of lack of inventory. The interest rate jumping up a little bit may pull some people out of oh, this. no doubt. Yeah, so, you know, I, I use this analogy all the time, you know, the deep end of the Olympic size, the 10 meter or whatever it the is. The swimming pool. The swimming pool. So it's starting to drop a little bit. Um, I just don't think the inventory portion is moving up. I was reading an article, again, in the Wall Street Journal. We were at one point in time 5.5 .5 million units down a couple of years ago. This is new construction nationally. I think we're closer to four down at the moment, so we're making progress. But four million is a huge number um, to make up the difference. And as I said in, in the interview on 29, you know, it's 101. We, we need more units in order to get them market to balance on that end of it but um i think i think you're going to see some stabil stabilization though i think when we start looking in second and third quarter and we do the show about this i i, I just don't think you're going to see these huge increases in up sales numbers quarter over quarter because i think the interest rates are going to start tamping that down a little bit on that end of it um i have not had an opportunity to dig into a great i greater than i did but I, my next step is how many of these were cash? How many of these were conventional? How many of these were <clears throat> different type of loans? But the thing that surprises me is you would think even the higher price points would be softer. But that's not necessarily what we're seeing. Yeah, but that's changed a long time ago, right? Okay. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> that 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 changed pretty much the beginning of of COVID, okay. right? Remember, everybody was thinking prior to COVID, some of the upper end products, you know, op upper end homes. I don't like using the word soft, but let's just use that for the sake of a talk show. Was soft that the the trading wasn't as rapid and yeah. Fair. That's not the case now. Um, that's simply not the case at, at at this particular point. So all the 
ladder of the housing of ladder, all the, uh, afford, uh, the housing affordability spectrum is being impacted by this. And it's being in, impacted by, you know, lack of inventory and, and uh, you know, the, the, the supply 101. Let's, uh, let's get to some comments. Kevin Yancey, the lowest home, the lowest priced home in Waynesboro right now is $195,000. 897 square feet, two bedroom, one bathroom on 0 0.3 acres, built in 1941. Yeah, and, and, and that, is, that is 897 square feet. It's not a large home. Yeah, so um, I didn't bring actives with me. I've just brought solds. Um, so yeah, totally. Um, I get, and it, it'll sell if my math tracks out. It'll sell for 195, pretty darn close to it I, on that end of it. And you know, somebody will come in that. Uh, renovate it, or if it's not renovated already, or add a little bit of space to it. That is a that is a lot that's large enough to go ahead and and add uh, an extension to it or something along those. Jennifer lines. Smith, question for Keith: If you own a house, are we related? Are you? I, I, well, you should know that. <laughs> uh, it's a joke. It's a Smith thing. Uh, Jennifer Smith says this: um, If you own a home currently and are looking to buy another home and you need to sell your existing home for the money to buy the other home, how can you possibly do that in this market? Yeah, so great question. Domino deal. Well, great question. So, so the, and thank you. So the question is, is, is asked, right? If I, because it's a double, edge, it's two sides of a coin here we're working with, right? One, I want to sell my home, but I, I need to sell my home to buy home number two. So that's the math. That's what she's asking. That's the math equation. Then the equation of how do I compete against cash and how do I compete? Well, time. Correct. So, so we, we talked about this with um, Ivy Haynes, if you don't mind tagging us, yeah. that that was, would be great. Ivy Haynes, I believe it was Wednesday, and, and Scott Morris, um, there's a tool available, and, and actually I'm, we're working with several clients to do this, is what they call a, um, <clears throat> possession by seller. So the way this market is going right now, I know you're smiling. <laughs> so the way this market is, but it works. I, I the way this it blew my mind. I, it's working. The way this market is going right now, um, if you take a deep dive into the agent side notes of some of some of these listings that are active in there, almost all of them are saying, "Hey, I'll accept a contract as long as I can stay in my house for a, a period of time." Right. So so. So the, 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 the math issue here is, is okay, I'm going to sell my house now. I'm going to get the most amount of money for my home right now. I'm going to net so much. I'm going to sell the house to Jerry. Jerry's going to say, you know what, I'll let you live in the house for either so many months free or with some sort of rent back scenario because you're, you're going to have to pay rent to do this for six months or whatever we negotiate. Six months? I've, I've, I've seen ones for years, a year. What? Jesus I see. It, it, it Lord, worked. Did you just hear that, viewers and listeners? Well, it. it uh, you, you, no, yeah. come on, come on. Yeah, You're new, joking. Yeah, totally. I've, I've got one right now where new construction, they're building a house, they're, they're here, and, they, and the buyer is an empty nester out of up, up north. They're renting a home for, it, it works. They're renting a home for a year in Northern Virginia. They Seller sold, possession for a year. Oh, yeah, sure. They sold, they sold their home oh in Old Town. I don't want to get too specific, but they sold their home in Old Town, made a substantial amount of money. They're renting something up there. They took that cash. They bought something down here. The seller is building a home. We're connected to every one of these transactions, um, and they're staying in for a year. And so, so Dmax says Fannie Mae only allows sixty days. So that was the conversation with we, Scott Morris. With Scott Morris, right? So this happens to be a cash transaction. So the thing is. This is happening. Who's looking at that, right? Who's following that up to go ahead and do that? Because you're 100 percent right. There's a document you're going to sign. Because then it doesn't become a primary residence; it becomes a, an investment property. Got it. And I'm not so sure everybody's looking hard at that, right? It's just the way the. Oh, market. you're saying. Uh, well, who who enforces that? Who? Uh, let's ask uh, Dana McDougal. Yeah. Who so, enforces that? How would Fannie Mae enforce that, Dana McDougal? Yeah. So the only way they could afford it, it's like anything with zoning. That's a great question. Yeah. Yeah. So how it's enforced, somebody drops a dime. Ivy Haynes, hello. Or a quarter. Drop or a, a dime. A dollar. Well, in inflation now, it's drop a 50 cent piece. Drop an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi to your friend Ivy Haynes. Hey, Ivy, how you doing? It was a great show on Wednesday. Oh, thank you for, thank you for coming Haynes. in. 
But that's but it's like anything. How do you enforce that? How do you enforce um, zoning ordinances? Like there's a zoning cop that well, goes. Well, zoning out. is a little easier to enforce. How does Fain? Okay, Dato McDougal, if you're watching yeah. the program, Scott, Scott, Morris. Scott Morris. Scott Morris. Scott Morris, if you're watching. Hello, Ivy. Yes. If you're watching the program, Scott Morris. How Dan, Daniel help us out here? How would Fannie Mae enforce or any of the loan products that, that require seller possession, whether complementary or or rent back? How would they enforce the sixty day cap threshold? Well, 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 yeah, correct. So the sixty days is kind of a gimme. Anything yeah. above that, and we are seeing these things happen. They're happening happening on um, in the market in the marketplace. KJ Kelly Jackson, hello. Say hello hey, to our friend Kelly, Kelly Jackson. Jackson. I miss talking to her. Oh, she, she was, was fantastic the other day. Uh, I didn't get a chance to see it. Broke a little back. news with the Marshall to Fifth Street Station. Uh, you know, I've, I've been busy crunching numbers. You probably might want to share that with me. That ended up it. going viral, KJ. There you go. Um, Fifth Street Station, Marshall's new tenant, leaving uh, the city of Charlottesville to Almaro County. Tax I, base going from the city to the county. I did, Marshall's. I did see the post you did on the businesses for sale. That was actually really good. Thank you very much. We were actually talking about that in the office yesterday. Thank you very much. Uh, Daniel McDougall says, it might be discovered by accident via mail issues, hazard policies written incorrectly, yeah. etc." So yeah. let me ask you this, Daniel McDougall. And any loan officer, Scott Morris, if you're watching, jump in here. Let's say, all right, I'm going to try to help me walk through this. I, I think they've got other fish to fry than, than this one. Help me walk through this. Okay? Like fair housing and stuff like that. Help me walk through this. Loan product, Fannie Mae. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say it's Fannie Mae. Let's say Keith and Yona sell their home at Lake Monticello. Stop it. <laughs> let's he doesn't want to sell, and Yoda does. Um, let's just, okay, let's say. Look at the time. Got to go. <laughs> let's say, folks, let's, we won't use the Smiths. You the can folks, use the Smiths. It's okay. Everybody the, knows. The Smiths and Lake Monticello sell their home. Mrs. That's, Smith sells the home and says, Keith, you're coming. This is how this is going to work. <laughs> the Smiths sell their home in Lake Monticello. They ask for, because he's, Mr. Smith is a shrewd negotiator, and he asks for complimentary seller possession. And that complimentary seller possession ends up being six months and not the 60 days allowed by Fannie Mae. What would happen, Daniel McDougall, what would happen if Fannie Mae finds out that it's a six-month complimentary seller possession? Well, it wouldn't be complimentary. I, you know, I would expect to pay after the first 60 You days. would ask for complimentary. Uh, of course I would, but... but, but, but since I negotiate for a living, I know what's realistic and I know what's not realistic. So we'll pay. But immaterial, if it's complimentary or pay, it's, it's a great question. What, what's the ramifications? What is the ramifications, what's the ramifications of that? And how does that process work? And I just don't think much of anything is going to happen. I think the way this market... Would the is, loan be called? He, mean, says, I, he says um, FNMA mm -hmm. um, pulls the loan. Yeah, I mean, it, it could, the loan could get pulled. How likely would that happen? Yeah. That's what I was yeah, wondering, Daniel. Yeah, it's, it's, it, look, if you're smart enough and you've got all your, your documents going in the right place and as far as the mail and all this kind of great stuff in your mail, it, it's just, it's more of, a, of an ethical and moral question because you're signing a document saying you're not going to do this, right? But the reality is of the reality at, at this point in time. And maybe this is something that, that the mortgage folks can get in front of and say, look, in today's market, this is something we can, we can change on that end of it. But it's truly, it's set up, particularly the first time home buyer product, it's set up that it needs to be your primary, you need to move in. I don't Ray Cadell says the insurance may catch it. Yeah, correct. And notify the lender. Correct. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there are some mechanisms to go ahead and do that. Well, ask, ask, ask the the wonderful Ray Cadell. Um, does he see this? Because he deals with a lot of first time home buyers. You're asking him right now. I'm asking He's him right watching. now. Right, yeah. There you go. Duh. Ask him. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, is he seeing stuff over sixty days with the seller? Seller, uh, uh, seller possession. I know we are. I know this is commonplace. I know you look in, in the listing agreements and they're talking about it. But to go back to, I'm getting phone calls, to go back to uh, Ms. Smith's, um, Smith's question, right? Let's put this question to the side about what the ramifications are. It is a tool that is currently being used 
for that end of it so that you could potentially stay in your home for an extended period of time while you're trying to go ahead and find your other thing. You cash out, you have your cash in your account, right? You're able to put a substantial down payment, hopefully, which makes it more competitive, make you more competitive on the buy side on, on it. You know, other than this goofy question, which we don't have an answer to, and, and we really need to bring well, I mean, it. It's important to emphasize, and Daniel McDougal is making this very clear here, that is loan fraud. Yeah. 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 So now that's a great question. So what do we do now, Coach? Right? No, it's being done, right? And, and if it's being done, how, how do we stay is a great question for him. So if we have sellers that want to do this, what loan product? So I'm, now I'm looking at multiple offers, right? I'm just mm -hmm. I'm, I'm winging this here as What's we're up, John Blair? as we're doing this. Uh, hey, John. As we as we let, let's let me let's get some help from the professionals from the loan professionals on there, right? I'm representing you. I'm selling you. We put in this this um, this thing that you need to stay in your home for six months. Let's just pick this as, as well. You're picking a time over sixty days. I'm picking a time over sixty days, yeah. right? So now I'm looking at offers and I'm trying to help my client navigate that. What loan product? if there is even any loan product that I need to be looking at from the buyer to make sure that we don't have a loan fraud problem. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. It's actually, it's, it would actually be on the, I would actually be on the buyer side because the, the, once the transaction happens, it's not the seller that is doing the fraud. It's the buyer. It's the buyer. It's the the buyer. buyer's getting the financing. So, so let me try this a different way without confusing Smith, because that's what I'm doing right yeah. now. Well, ask Daniel McDougal. He's yeah, watching. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Is what loan product should can my client now use that will keep them up from, from doing that? Does that make sense? Yes. So if a buyer is buying a house, they cannot use a Fannie Mae product because they have a 60-day threshold. What, pro what loan product Which can I financing use? vehicle Correct. can the buyer utilize? <laughs> Do not commit cash. loan for loan fraud other, other than, than cash. Other than cash, right? And That's does, a great question. And does down a volume of down payment change that in, impact that a little bit? This is really a Wednesday with Scott Morris uh, conversation on that end of it. I, I love this. So here story. it is. He's got an answer. Yeah, I've, I'm, there's no doubt in my mind. Scott about. Morris, jump in here too. So, dude, I love the show. Isn't it fun? I'm learning. Isn't it You're, fun? Are you learning? I, I'm learning. I'm, I'm, I'm. This is a man who's been in the business since '87. 102 years. No. <laughs> Have you been in the business 87? I've been, I've been in the, from 87. So you've right? been in the business 35 years? 35 years. Yeah. Okay, here's, ready for this? And uh, what I know, what we're talking about right now will be different this time next year. <coughs> right? Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about the show. And the other beautiful thing about the show is... This. They will call, they will call us out. Yeah. That's why you prepare. That's why I prepare. And, 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 and I've only seen, and I'm going to give you some props here. I've only seen, how long we've been doing this show? We're, we are... Several months into our fourth year. I've only seen you say on the show, make two, two mistakes. And now you're going to say I make mistakes all the time. But two things you've said on the show. I think I made a dozen so far. No, but only two. Really? To your credit. Daniel yeah. McDougall says this yeah, to answer look, your question. Yeah, because this is a great, this is, so, so the real estate agents out there listening. You're learning. You're learning here, right? And, and you don't want to be committing loan fraud. Well... Now that you know, yeah. right, you have to advise your client. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious, what's the answer? He says, if it were to be done correctly and above board, six months to a year of seller possession of a property, the buyers would need to do an investment property loan. Yeah. The seller could pay points to bring it down to primary rates. Got it. So what I'm because the investment property is coming at an interest rate that's higher than a sure. primary residence property, sure. Sure. for those that don't know. So what I'm hearing is there's no conventional product. That's what he's saying. There's, I just want to make sure we understand. No that. conventional product. There is that is, right, Daniel McDougall? There is no conventional product at all. We know VA, you can't do it. We know some of the governmental-backed products. But there's no conventional... Outside of cash. I swear, we're not talking cash. Yeah. Right. So there's no conventional product that does not have that 60-day clause in it. That's the question. Because I'm rethinking it. Through. Dude, uh, agents are getting a little scared right now. We've got yeah. some comments coming in here. Yeah, no. You ready for this? Okay, so this is No, from, I'm not. <laughs> this is from Ray Cadell. Hey, Ray. He says, yikes. Yeah. If we as realtors know and move the transaction along, are the realtors also part of loan fraud? Are the realtors also party to the loan fraud? 
So Ray's asking that question. Hey, are we at 11.30 already? <laughs> Look at this. No, I gotta go. No. I gotta meet you. You have no idea the show is going to go down this road here. Oh, God. No I got, idea. I got all kinds of stats. No uh, idea. So Cadell, Ray Cadell, he's a broker. Oh, yeah. Manages the team. Not, not only a broker. A plus guy. A plus, plus, plus. Yeah, we love you, Ray God. Cadell. You know a, we do. A plus, plus human right off the bat. Best horn player. On the East Coast. I think the world, but that's just me. He says he's asking on one Facebook page to an expert on another page. If Somebody, the, are the realtors so, uh, <coughs> complicit so Ray, with the loan fraud? So, Ray, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor on this, and, and both of us will get in trouble for doing this. Um, I can't do it because I don't have it in front of me. But guess what, Ray? Ask that question. In the Daniel McDougall says absolutely the realtors are a part of loan fraud so, if they move the deal along. So, Ray, ask that question in the car close Facebook group. Let's get, let's get our realtors involved. Look at that, I even said it right. And tag Donna Patton, who is my, um, 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 what is it called? Um, she's a, uh, I'll, get, I'll get it, what she does. She's the car president. No, no, Donna Patton. Oh, Pam Dent's the car president. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, She's, she's an important person with Keller Williams. She huh? is. It'll come to me. Okay. Uh, 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 We're on a talk show. So We're on a talk show. Oh, We're on a talk show. Oh, keep, come on. Got to keep talking. Oh, come on. Come on. To make sure I do everything right. What is this called? Come on, Smith. Team leader. Uh, no, 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 no. Rules and regulations advisor. Yeah, no, no. God almighty. Donna was going to kill me. I just spent four days with her doing my broker, broker class. Anyway, make sure we don't break the rules. There's a... There's a um, uh, okay, okay. We, we've, we've got, got it. it. She's we, a rule. She, she's enforcing the rules with Keller Williams. So tag her on leave it on that. Well, now I'm getting nervous, right? <laughs> because, you know, we've been suggesting this on the show. I you Forever. <laughs> right? Right? We've been suggesting. Well, to your credit, you've suggested seller possession, not necessarily time stamped. Although you did allude to the seller possession that's happening for a year earlier in the program. Well, and what institute did... In, risk management? Ri risk man management. Thank you very thank much. You, Daniel Pe Daniel thank you, Daniel Pettit. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for keeping me straight, my friend. Compliance. That's the word I'm looking for. Risk management and compliance. Okay. So, we just learned something. Well, so... so so, Realtors should know this. Yeah, so I, I think somebody should throw that question out in the car close Facebook and get some of the brokers moving along. Uh, next Friday, we've got Sasha Trip coming in and Quentin Beckham or, and for a broker roundtable, and I think we're just going to ask this question and get it from a broker's um, uh, opinion on that. But I, I think everybody is right. So if we know, if there is literally... Dude, this is blowing up right now. If there's oh, literally... Tag our, our folks at Channel 29. We'll give this them some This is more. blowing we'll up give right some, now. We'll give them some more news. Um, and who knows, I might be having... I don't know, Ray, am I got, did I just get myself into some ethics problems here? Who knows? No, you didn't. Yeah, I'm only kidding. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so that's interesting, right? We've been suggesting that and, and what, what chimed this whole conversation Dude, here... every realtor's been suggesting that. Yeah. He just well, posted it in the car group. Thank Ray you. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. Let's see. And Ray, keep track of that. Ray, let us know the responses there. On, on that end of it. So that's uh, loan fraud. Yeah. Um, and, and this is interesting. You know, how does this actually work? And, and uh, Mr. McDougall is, is right. I think you probably to do it according to Hoyle. Um, you need to do one loan product. And, of course, that's going to be expensive. And Oh, it's, it's going to be higher rates. And then the, the follow-up question is, if I know that as the listing agent, right, and I know that this is going... Because the listing agents are putting it in the notes. So that's exactly what triggered... The this. listing agents are the ones yeah, yeah. that are I, I, encouraging I, this. I've seen it in several listings um, last weekend that I was showing, you know. So Daniel Pettit asked for Daniel McDougal, what would the rates be for this property if it's considered an investment property and the seller needs to stay in the home longer than 60 days. Well, it's not only that. It's going to, it, more than likely, it's going to be a short-term commercial loan, which is generally some sort of points over prime. This I know a lot about because I did this my whole career on, on that end of the stuff. So it's interesting um, on how, yeah. You know, now maybe the answer is, you go call up Scott or Mr. McDougal, and I'm just spitballing here, um, and get an, a HELOC on your house, 
and cash out and cash out and use that cash to buy. I, I don't know because what? walk me through that. Well, you I'm, get I'm a just, home equity line of credit. I'm just the whole theory of this. That's getting complicated, it, without a doubt. The whole theory of this is sell my house, right? Yeah. Cash out, stay in my house, right, and have time to go find another house. Yeah. No, so I get that. So what we just learned, what I've just learned, is you can't do that. You only can do it for sixty days. Yeah. I can't do it for 90 days. I Michael Buchensky is watching. We have, we have, from my count, six mortgage guys. So what does Michael say? Michael Buchensky, First Heritage. We love, we love Coach Buchensky. Yeah, well done, man. Um, the rule is 60 days for possession. Dude, it's coming in fast and furious right now. Buchensky says the rule is 60 days for possession for a new primary. If you skirt that issue, it is loan fraud, bottom line. Got it. Bottom line. Yeah. McDougal responds... Typically, with 20% down, two points would be added into closing costs for an investment property loan. That's, a, that's an answer for Daniel Pettit right there. I'm seeing set. Well, walk that one I'm back. I'm seeing six firms here, realtors watching. Yeah, yeah. So let's walk that back watching. a little bit. So, what we're saying on the buyer side, there's a product out there. We'll have to pay a couple of points to do it. But you can, it's an investment property you loan. You can do investment property. And I wonder if there's a product out there to meet this need almost like a construction permit. I'm just, I'm just throwing ideas out to the loan officers. So why don't we get Buchensky in the mix here again? Um, Michael Buchensky, we got a mad respect for you None of this was here. what I prepared for. Uh, dude, I know. This is the beautiful thing of the show. <laughs> I love it. The viewers and listeners take us where, where, where the market wants to go. And this is where the market wants us to go. So what we're saying, I got it. Yeah, so what we're, what, what we're saying here is as a buyer goes and you want to do this, other than this potential product that, that we're talking about, this invest alone, which I'd really like to get a better understanding of that out on how that works, it's really only cash. Am I? Am I well, you got the investor loan or cash. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah. an invest. Whatever this, whatever this path. Unless it's under sixty days. Correct. Yeah. So so right now. So it sounds like a car and a ton of listing agents better start modifying some notes on their listings immediately. So right right now. When we're going to have a Yes Realty Partners meeting. After, yeah, I was going to say. After this, <laughs> I know. after this show. <laughs> yes Realty Partners. And we're going to have. Uh, Christopher a, Eagle and everybody a, matter, else. Matter of fact, start tagging people. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do this meeting right now, <laughs> live. Okay. Every uh, brokerage. No, no, I'm serious. Start tagging people. <laughs> every brokerage in Central Virginia, start modifying your listing notes. Uh, so, Michael. Well, Buch it's, it's not even the listing notes. Dude, it, 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 the listing notes are straight up saying this. Yeah. And they're saying over asking for over 60 days. Yeah, we're, we're, I'm a little out of my pay grade here, but, but all this. this. I've never seen my man. My man is sweating over here. My homie is sweating over here. <laughs> yeah, I mean. But look, this is how this stuff works, right? Oh, you know, yeah. we're 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 trying to help clients. We're trying to we're trying to, to be the trusted advisors. And and the and the comment I made earlier, what we're talking about right now, will be very different six twelve months from now. But where we are right now at this very moment, um, it sounds like there needs to be some conversations about this. That if it's a conventional loan and then who, who's responsible for this well right? let, let me ask michael buchensky this michael Be, buchensky we let me let me, let me finish this train please, of thought please, real quick. please please okay uh, a lot of uh, i'm thinking out loud here okay a lot of this is a ramification of covid of and why course. am i why am i saying that ask the real ask the loan officers on there when was the last time they were at a physical closing right because you're saying there's not the communication that there used to be. There's not the communication that it used to be. There not there wasn't where we sit down at a closing, and it was Bill Tucker, Charles Full Settlement, Closure Title. You as the as the real estate agent, the loan officers would show up or somebody from that, and they would literally go through all the documents. That's not really happening now. And maybe this is a result of that, that this stuff is getting missed, missed a little bit on that. Um, you know, I'm not, you know, when people's comfort levels go up, that, that's a whole different discussion. And I'm just thinking out loud because I, I, I have not been at a physical closing with a client in over two years. 
right? When we sat down and went through this and spent the hour to go through all the loan docs, because as I'm replaying through my head in previous closings, usually the loan officer or the closing agent or the attorney, whoever's doing it, will make sure everybody understands this is your primary residence and you've got to take possession within 60 days. And that conversation I don't think is happening Well, now. yeah. Okay, so... Multiple, a Does lot of stuff's sense? coming in fast. Well, made, made sense. That was very clearly put. Um, Michael Buchensky, I got to ask you this question for the coach. We were talking with Daniel McDougal, who's in the comment section here. And the question I have for you, Michael, if the listing agent puts in the notes that the seller wants possession for longer than 60 days, markets the property. So we just, we, we've just ascertain, ascertained without a doubt, you can't go over 60 well, days. You can't go over 60 days. So I'm now going to ask a second professional this question. Yeah. Michael, if the listing agent puts in the notes that the seller needs possession after closing for longer than 60 days, is that listing agent complicit in loan fraud? Hmm. That's a question I have for you, Michael. And secondly, the second question I have... Yeah, I'm not so sure about that, but... But I, McDougal says yes. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that, first of all, let's be very careful here. We're going down some slippery slopes, right? We, we got it, you know, we don't have lawyers in the room, right? We don't have people that really look at this stuff. This is a talk show going back and forth. Um, I don't know who's comp on, on that end of it. I know, I know that if that's the case, the seller, the buyer is, and potentially the buyer's agent is, getting themselves in a bit of, a bit of hot, hot water in here. I'm not so sure the listing agent. Okay, why do you say the, the buyer's representative and not the seller's representative? Well, it's, it's because... Because the seller's representative is the one that's asking for it. Well, actually, the seller is asking for it, right? But the seller's representative has to do the what's best for the seller. Yeah, but the seller is, is, is asking for it. I, I'm not so sure. And we're way... I mean, I'm, right? How many years? We're in our... Three, three years, few months. So I am squirming a little bit. I don't I, do. I, see I don't do that I very often. Uh, uh, but look, the reality of it is, what we need to now figure out, and we need to bring the smart people in the room. Not that anybody on this feed isn't smart, but we got to bring the legal beagles and in, in 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 on it. You're smiling. The legal beagles. The legal is, beagles. I got right, right. I'm I'm going back to the '70s. The legal so, beagles is funny. Um, the legal beagles into it, and the people that really look at this that are way smarter than I will ever be on this end of it. But the bottom line is, we need to look at this. This is a real thing. Michael Buchensky responded. Yeah, sure. Um. He does not think that the seller's listing agent yeah. is complicit with I, low, I, loan fraud. I would agree with that. But he has a huge butt in all caps. Huge butt well, in all me, caps. Before, before you go to the yeah. butt, the other answer is, is, is the loan officer also, right? The loan officer on the buy side yes. is, is also complicit. Yes. That. His huge butt is, but the buyer can only buy it as an investment property or second home due to the 60-day rule, yeah. and if it's longer, it's loan fraud. So, so, so who is that? Let's, ask, let's, let's kind of break this down a little bit. Um, the federal regulators have established the 60-day rule. That's a question for everybody out there. I think I know the answer to it, but we need to determine you know, who is setting that up, right? Who, who, who established that criteria? I'm pretty sure it's the federal regulators, which I think, and... and this is a result. This may be a result, and I'm trying to go McDougal back. McDougal says, once I see this on a contract, the loan is dead for him. So there's your first stop. He right. says, if I see this on a contract. Let's talk about that, how that works, right? So if any and, of the loan. And Buchensky says Fannie and Freddie. Fannie and Freddie did this. Yeah. Which are quasi-governmental oh, no doubt. Go uh, bodies. Um, so that's great. So now we know we've got loan officers that are gonna look at a contract, because that's what they're supposed to do, right? Um, I'm representing the buyer, right? And, and you are a loan officer, and you because I have to present the contract to you, right, to go through the process. And if you catch that in the contract, uh, you do that. The, the funny thing is... Um, I'm looking at three homes on the MLS right now where the seller is asking for possession longer than 60 days in yeah, the notes. And that's in the public side. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Three days, three homes. Yeah, sure. 
So the question for the loan officer is, is, is sometimes that doesn't end up in the contract. That ends up as an addendum to the contract somewhere along along the line. So sometimes they don't necessarily, that this don't necessarily end up in in the contract. The seller possession agreement is a separate agreement to that. So what what I need to do at this point. Well, did you ask that to Daniel and to Michael Buchensky? If it's an addendum, they wouldn't see it. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Maybe yes, maybe no yes. Yeah. Right? So yeah. then the then the there's some addend there's some addendums and amendments. Excuse me, let me back up for a second. An addendum they would because that is attached to the contract. An amendment sometimes they don't see it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So if it's an amendment, and an the addendum they would, amendment they would not. If it's an amendment, okay. So I'm learning. If it's an amendment and it's done by the buyer's representative. So it's the simple difference is that an addendum is part of the contract or addending an existing contract. An amendment it's is a separate document after a contract is ratified. Something is changed to the contract after that. So if sometimes. the buyer's representative does an amendment. Sometimes they see it. Sometimes the loan officers see something. It depends on what it is, right? That amendment would that 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 would Some, be, that would be a loan fraud. No, well, I'm not talking about this specific instance. I'm just talking about amendments in general, right? They they sometimes don't end up at the loan officer. But we're really going down a little bit of a slippery slope here. And and again, I'll re repeat myself a couple of times, so it's on the record. We need to get legal advice. We need to get folks in here from the mortgage company we need to get folks in from the associations to find out you know wh where we're where we're at at this point the thing that i want to personally do is reach out to legal aid at virginia realtors right because we have a legal a aid department that looks at this stuff with a stack with a couple of real uh, law real estate lawyers there and say okay guys this is the question that came up today uh, on today's show I have right. a feeling they're getting a phone call from you here at about 11.32 in the morning. I guarantee you they're getting phone calls before I make the phone call. Um, <laughs> I think the phone calls are happening right now. That's the point. Um, so the question would be, would, so the, the, the smart move here is toss it to the legal beagles of Virginia Realtors and say, okay, guys, if I am a buyer's agent and the buyer is doing an amendment to the contract or something that's in the contract or whatever it is exceeding the 60, 60 days on that end of it, what's the ramifications and what do we do? How does this work, right? So th this, is a, this is a great effing question. Yeah, okay, uh, Michael Buchansky, Paul McCarter, hello. We got, I see six, um, Real estate firms watching this show. Have right I now. been fired, by the way? I, <laughs> there that. are six different ones watching. <laughs> Michael Buchensky. I know Mrs. Smith is watching. The so. buyer signs a form that at says closing that. That's exactly right. saying they will move into the home within 60 days. If a separate addendum or amendment exists, the loan officer does not see it, but the buyer signs the 60 day form, then it's fraud from the buyer end. Correct. Well, that, it's that, loan fraud. And that's the reason why I. I I don't think the the listing as I think I think Mike said. Uh, no, Mike did say yeah, that, so I, and you were right. Yeah. But the buyer's agent would be. So it's it's typically on the buy side, yeah. right? The, the seller. This is, you know, uh, I I don't think. Again, I'm not a lawyer. I don't even play one on TV. <laughs> or, and you did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last I night. I did not stay in a Holiday Inn Express la last night. Um, uh, I'm a Hilton guy, but that's a whole different story. The the uh, the reality of it is, we, we need to start. We need to get some people in here that are way smarter than myself to start answering this question. But we know enough to know something ain't right, and we need to we need to take a look at this as professionals. Uh, McDougal says, Daniel McDougal and Michael Buchensky, you guys are crushing it today. He says, if the seller needs possession longer than 60 days, they need to go after cash buyers. Well, we said that, right? There's only, at this point, based on this conversation, based on this feedback, right? What's going on with the car Facebook, the private group with I, car, rake it out? As we stand at this moment, um, the... There's only two, as we understand it, at this very moment, is cash or some of these investor loan conversion products that might be out there. But it's, it's an interesting... Kuchensky says, all agents, don't ruin your career for one deal. It's best to be upfront from the buyer end. Well, it's also, it's, it's also maybe they don't know either, right? That, that's, that's, that look, that, um, Ignorance is, uh, is not an excuse. Yeah. It's not an excuse, right? But 
That's the reason why we spend the time that we do to educate ourselves. Saying. This is why we spend the time that we do, at least with these microphones in front of us, to help, help us be better at what we do. So we now know there's a question, right? We know that much. And we need to get in front of that question and, and figure out what the answer is to that question. Because everything that we're looking at here, everything that you're looking at on the market right now is how do we answer Ms. Smith's question? How do we help Ms. Smith achieve her goals? Right, that's my function. But right now, my answer can be we can do a 60 day, 60 day seller possession on that end of it. Um, now, on Ms. Smith's end of it, if there's a loan that goes through and closes with, with six months, it's on the, it's on the buyer side. For Kevin, Kevin, multiple people are asking this. This is not, this type of listing is not local. This is happening everywhere. It's not just happening in oh, Central no, this Virginia. Is, this is, it's everywhere. It's nationwide. Yeah, this yeah. is nationwide. Yeah, sure. um, so what's the... You have seven yeah. firms yeah. now on the show. So what's the workaround? And that's a, that's a poor choice of words. So what's the solution? That's a better choice of words. So Because we've got to help Ms. Smith achieve her goal, right? To sell and buy. That's what she wants to do. And we're here to help. But right now, we, we've kind of just kind of severely hurt, at least the way, the way I understand it, one of the tools that we've oh, been well, talking you, as about. As long as it's 60 days or under. As long as it's 60 days and yeah. under. But uh, YRP, we're going to have a meeting today, guys. Uh, I have a feeling uh, many of the brokerages in town are having a meeting about this. Yeah, um, right. Or I'm going to get a special phone call to show up at some meeting somewhere. Um, Daniel McDougall, the reason this is a rule is because investors... Yeah. Um, because investors a long time ago would say they were going to move in the house as a primary residence, but they never did. Then so they this, got lower rates as a primary residence, but underwriters caught it. Yeah, so this was the result of the time of great unpleasantness, I yeah. think. You know, that what we're referring, who was that that spoke? Uh, Daniel McDougall. Daniel. Uh, I and he said 90% of his loan deals, 90%, he is not seeing the people. It's e-filing. Yeah, so you know, maybe we need to get back to meeting people. Maybe we need to get back to face-to-face um, -face conversations on this, on this end, on, on that end of it. But um, look, uh, it's why I spent six hours working on it. It's why I got up this morning to get the spreadsheet together on it. We, <laughs> we didn't talk too much about it today, uh, which is great. But this is why we do the show. This is why you know, I, you know, we, we we're trying to make. At least I am. We're trying to make our profession better. Our yeah. professions better. You're a very ethical, above board guy. Um, this is a good one, good comment that just came in from Michael Buchensky. I have a solid local investor we do business with that I can get an investment property with 25% down. A credit should be able to get a rate of 4.75%. With half a point, but that's not helping Miss Smith. Well, no, he. But we're talking about. We asked him about yeah, sure. the investment rates. Sure, we asked him that. Um, so a local investor with a credit and twenty five percent down payment, um, the rate is four point seven five percent, with um, a half a point, with zero zero point five points on a seven year arm, or 15, 15 year fixed at five point two five percent. With half a point, if, but I, but I would need to see the client app, credit, etc., to determine if that's available. So, if this tool has been warded down, right? Let's let's call it warded down, right? We we we, we I think we've pretty much ascertained that it's sixty days or no, or, 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 or some other product. Dude, I, I there are legitimately I'm looking at three homes on the public MLS right now sure. that are asking for longer than that. Longer than sixty days. Yeah. I'm li literally. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. So, but but as you're speaking and and as Mike is speaking as we're going through this thing. If this is really a tool that's not available to Ms. Smith, and I'm making some assumptions about Ms. Smith here, um, you know, the housing affordability is going to get worse. I, I, don't even, I, I don't even have a tool because of my ass assumption, unless you have 25% down, the assumption here is I'm selling my house so I can pull 20% worth of cash to go buy. If I don't have that cash, that's the reason I was throwing out, throwing out the... Um, HELOC on the, on the, you know, if there's equity in the home, maybe you can do a HELOC cash out, use that cash as this 25% down 
to move forward to buy. And I, I think I just confused you. Yeah, you confused everybody. Yeah, yeah. So you're saying... You should, so if I, got, if I have cash, if I, Ms. Smith has $50,000 worth of equity in her house, and she goes and gets a line of credit, a, a, a HELOC on it, and pulls the cash out and uses that cash, right, to go ahead, because she, she's got a second side of this equation she's got to work on. Selling, she's fine, but then she might potentially be violating... Um, uh, for loan fraud on the buy because she needs more than 60 days to go ahead and do that. So if you get some cash, then I can do this other loan product. Is that making sense? The whole concept of, of seller possession, for the, for the most part, is to give time to find something else and bring cash to the table, right? The down payment on that. Is that making sense? Uh, that that makes, I just, that I just No, 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 that makes sense. I mean, in a lot of ways, you're just talking about a bridge loan. Yeah, so HELOC. It's a bridge loan. It's a bridge loan. It's a yeah. HELOC. Whatever it is, take the equity that's in your home, convert it to cash. Then I can go out and buy something. But if you do that, you're going to get stung multiple times with loans. Loan closing. Yeah. You're going to end up at some point in time making two payments. That's what I'm saying. Two mortgage payments. If, you, if it's more time. than 60 days. It's more than 60 days, but the, the, the mortgage payment, double mortgage payment can be offset because now I'm going to charge you rent, which is equal to the rent that I'm paying over there. So that can balance out a little bit. That, that makes the domino it, deal even more confusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, it's like... Just, That's a nightmare domino deal. It's a night, it's nightmare. It, this, yeah. is, this is a nightmare, but th this is a big thing. I'm, I'm curious what Ray is saying in the car. Yeah, Ray, what's the car uh, private group saying on the post you just did on this? And obviously, the car private group has got the brokerages watching your show right now, um, because well, uh, I'm seeing all of them on here. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I, I think they follow it anyway. I, we're, you know, it's not on the thing. Um, OfferPad was developed. This comment came in from yeah. Daniel. OfferPad was developed because of this conundrum. Yeah. They buy your house while you build a new one. Yeah. Then you go from one home to another with no issues of having having to find temporary space. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And it's not new construction. You can, in certain areas, you can do it. I don't this know. This comment's come in. Jer uh, okay, I will re re respect the anonymity. Um, Jerry, as you know, I'm a broker, but please don't use my name. Got it. Um, Am I getting into trouble? No. They sell their home, and then they go find a short-term rental, and it solves all of these problems. That's another solution. There you go. Sell your home. Take the money find a short-term rental, and then this solves the issue. It does, actually. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so, the, so, they, so that's the cash out. They've cashed There's, out. You took the money, you cashed out, see if you can find a rental. Well, let's play devil's advocate on that, much like my convoluted HELOC conversation. I'm moving twice. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Well, it's, no expensive. it's it. expensive. I'm moving twice. At least twice. you're not committing loan fraud. I'm not committing loan fraud. Yeah. I'm moving twice. And oh, by the way, um, what was that interview I did on Channel 29 about rental? Yeah, rentals have gone up 13% year over year. And why are they going up? It's harder to find a rental. Well, Paul McCarter just said, except there aren't short-term rentals to do that. That's exactly right. And, and they're not one-year rentals to do that. That's exactly right. And, and, and my years. rentals have gone up uh, close to 20% year over year. And there is probably not two-year rentals. To, to, so, so it's a great, so from a math perspective. I mean, then there's the hotel, but that can, that's not oh, going to yeah, be cheap. Yeah. That'll be a nightmare. Yeah. Well, so from, from whoever that broker was, they're, they're spot on. You know, that is a solution, except the reality, no, excuse me, the reality of that is where, it's still where am I going to go? Where am I going to find that? So that same question came in. I think the answer is um, uh, more product. Um, bridge loans, Michael Buchensky, bridge loans are not bad. Usually it's interest only in short term six month max, assuming the home sells fast. Yeah, that, it could potentially be that way. But you've got to have the equity, right? You've got to have. I mean, at this point, most of them have the equity. So that's an interesting thing. The na national average is about fifty-four, fifty-five thousand dollars $55,000 yeah. that people have. Certainly in, in our local market, yeah, they have. Right, the well, we're just looking at it right now, right? Um, we looked, that's the numbers I did crunch. Right, right the equity's there. The equity's there. Um, I think you're going to see some listings, uh, listing notes uh, revamped after this show. Yeah, um, my phone is blowing up too. So, 
<laughs> I just hope I didn't get too much trouble today. But that's that's what we do, right? This is good stuff, right? The the, the to get out there. So there's some product out there that we can do. It. There's some things I think I think folks need to start taking a look at it. I know I've been preaching that for some time, um, but you know what? I think I think to be honest with you, um, because we're not sitting face to face in closings anymore. I forgot all about that 60 day rule. I literally forgot about it. Kathy, uh, you're sick? Yeah, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Finding a short-term rental is impossible in this sure. market. Sure. It, so, so we can't find anything to buy, right? Can't find anything to rent. So what is Miss Smith going to do? Sit tight. Hopefully. And the Miss Smith he's talking about is a viewer, Jennifer Smith, who asked this question, saying they're looking to buy another house, but she has to, her family has to sell their current home sure. to buy the next home, which is extremely common. Sure. So we know now, at least at least from the seller side, there's less. Um, uh, it, and this this comment came in. This is a big reason for low inventory. This is what p potential sellers are facing. Yeah, sure, sure. This is a brutal market, dude. Yeah, yeah. So so you're 100 percent right, and 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 and. And I'm glad that this came up, and I'm glad we're having this conversation on this end of it. But we, you know, again, bottom line, unless it's a cash deal uh, or some other mechanism, I'm, I'm speaking as on the buy side, some sort of mechanism, a bridge loan, a heel lock, a, an investment property or something. Here's a question. I, I think one needs to look at the the ROI on stuff we're talking about, right? Because the, the cost to do the, the, the commercial, excuse me, the, the bridge or HELOC and all that stuff. Buchatsky just gave us that equation. May. Just gave us that scenario. Thank you. You may, ready for it? One, one moment, yeah. please. May offset rental, right? Right. So in other words, re finding a rental and moving expenses may be more expensive than what Michael's about ready to tell us. Um, Assuming you can find something. A bri bridge loan equity is tricky. Take the appraised value mm -hmm. and multiply it by 75%, mm -hmm. then subtract the loans on the property. Correct. The balance is what you can get as the bridge loan. Correct. For example, $400,000 value house times 75% equals 300000 If they owe 200000 then they have 100 k available for the bridge Correct. loan. Yeah. And it's generally interest only. Uh, this is a question. Generally, interest only, and the, That's what the, said, yeah. and the interest rates usually some something over prime. So whatever prime is, it's generally a point or a point and a half or two points over prime. So there's a path there, right? And so let's talk about the costs to do that, right? So you're gonna have to pay for an, and this is a question for Mike, right? There's there's some sort of appraisal costs, there's going to be some recording costs because this is going to be a deed, you know, a deed of trust of some sort on, on the property, and then what's the cost for origination fees and all that stuff. So, so if we are going to map out that as an option, Mike, what is my cost to my seller? A general rule. And, and if that is this amount, you know, whatever amount it is, and the amount to find a rental, Right, short-term rental, assuming you can find it in the moving twice. My suspicion is this path that Michael just outlined will be cheaper than that. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Especially since you can't find the rental. Oh, boy. Uh, let's say hello to the benevolent dictator. Oh, Mr. Beckham. Our friend Quinn Beckham. Yeah. We love you, QB. Uh, yeah. I'm, Huge I'm, fan of you, QB, I'm, as you know. I, I want to make sure. The, the question is, Smith wants to know that you still love him. <laughs> I think he does. <laughs> I know. I, I love him to death. This is where the market took the show. Yeah, yeah. We're uh, responding to the yeah, market. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, Mr. Beckham and I are going to go out for a martini this evening. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, where are you guys going? Um, I, t Tavola is... Tavola. Tavola, excuse me. He loves Tavola. Uh, I love it though. I had a I had a martini the other day that was just I had it on a Tuesday evening. We stopped in for for some or Wednesday I think it was, and I got to tell you I've been thinking about it ever since. Um, it's really good. Really normal tasting. purchase cost for closing costs is typically one or two points, and the rate is likely six percent or so um, interest only. Yeah. But since it's a short term rental, it's not terrible. Short term, it's not terrible. Yeah. So it's answering your question. Yeah. So um, back to this scenario of the hundred thousand dollars left over. I mean, it just gets calculated to your ROI, right? So whatever that cost may be, 
five, I'm picking a number, five thousand or ten thousand dollars, whatever it is. So your your net on your ROI on the sale is ninety, not a hundred, or whatever the math is it comes out to be. It's just the cost of the cost of doing business to make the transaction. But that sure as hell keeps you out of trouble. What's the, here's an interesting question. This is from Kelsey. What are the ramifications or punishment, she asks, of loan fraud? Yeah, that, the loan officers need to answer that. I, 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 I don't know. Um, Daniel and Michael, if you're watching, what are the ramifications and or punishment of loan fraud well, we, we, from Kelsey? We know. The loan is called, potentially. So, so um, yeah, I mean. I mean, I, you're talking potential uh, foreclosure because you're not going to be able to pay I, the I, loan. I, I, I'm That's why you took the loan to begin with. I'm stuttering. I don't know. I, I don't know if I've ever heard this happening before actually happening before but i'm sure somebody out there is a lot smarter than me is going to do it and and on that end of it but the loan officers the people in the trenches on that should be able to answer that <laughs> mcdougal just answered yeah michael what's your answer mcdougal says fines or you go to jail okay yeah i mean it's it's i again it's way out of my pay grade on this end of stuff but you know all we know is you're not supposed to do it, and it's loan, loan fraud. So we've got to come up with different mechanisms as agents to help our buyers get through this, and as loan officers to do, to do that, to help them. McDougal also, also adds, the only good thing about this market is that there are no chain closings where you might have 10-plus transactions all dependent on each other. One crash, uh, they all crash. That's the domino deal he's talking about. Yeah, right? I disagree with that. D domino domino deals are not gone that's for sure they they are they are out there and and Buchensky you know, ask I'm not answering he says ask a real estate attorney for that one but yeah. it's not good yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, you know it, it's not above board and it's not good so but I, I honestly believe a lot of this conversation we're having today is the result of you know not sitting at closure oh. title right with 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 the loan officer with with the folks at closure title, with the real estate agent, and stop just sitting at a table and going over loan documents. I think a lot of that is that. I think closings are, are, are very different than they were two years ago. Maybe, the, maybe we need to get back to that. I mean, Daniel, 90% of his business is online. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, uh, you know, do you actually sit down as a loan officer with, uh, at the closing table? It, that was commonplace. That was always the case. You don't see it so much anymore. Um, two other topics, 1130, mindful I'm, of time here. I, I, I'm, I'm good with time if you're good with time. Um, but I know you've got a, a busy next show. This is the uh, other topic um, from Kelly. Um, Kelly says, your thoughts on, uh, and I have, I have a feeling I know your answer here. Your thoughts on um, Fifth Street extended from a real estate standpoint with the new marshals coming in, with the Habitat for Humanity development coming in, Kyle Renninger's got a new property coming in. The thought is that there's a heck of a lot of uh, traffic and density he heading that way. That's what she's asking about. Yeah. So, um, it's Ooh. more... It's, you want me to answer that? Yeah, you will answer that, and then I got... You got to hear this one. Okay, okay go ahead. Yeah, so, um, Kelly, great question. Um, I'm going to twist it around a little bit on this end of it. And so I had a conversation with a potential listing at Lake Monticello, and this particular individual, um, uh, let's say we're not going to get the listing just to get that off the table, um, was very upset because there was two vacant lots next to them they're now getting built on, new construction getting built on. And they were upset with that and, and upset that homes are being built on vacant lots at Lake Monticello. And my comment to her was, well, A, you had an opportunity to buy both of those lots because they were right. on the market, and you chose not to do that. And that's an inc incredibly but, presumptuous comment. But what did you expect to happen? Right. So that comment is, is look, when Fifth Street, Fifth Street Station got built and put in and all this stuff, everything you just outlined eventually is going to happen. The, the market will just go there. To that, so you'll see, you know, um, it, it's just going to continue to grow up around that, much like Zion's Crossroads will, because water's coming and, and it's an inter intersection there. But it's going to continue, um, continue to grow, and, and and it'll grow. I 
I hope that did a decent job at that answer. But and, and, and we'll also add this from a And thank uh, you for the question, Kelly. Also add this. There's no inventory on the market. So houses are not gonna go down right now. They're not gonna go down in value. There's no inventory in the oh, market. Oh no, was that the That's, question? That was what she was alluding to. Oh yeah, no. With all the increased no. density around there, traffic congestion, et cetera. No. no yeah, no, they're not no. gonna go down value. You you might not quality of life and waiting in traffic longer is gonna certainly happen. Yeah. That will hundred percent happen. Yeah. Um Homes look, aren't going to drop. Look, back. so um, Album, Albemarle County, uh, no new construction, just regular. Uh, we had a jump of 50 grand year over year. So the median uh, sales price sold is the median in, two, in 2022, first quarter was 460. Last year was 410. So we had a 50 grand increase. I mean, that's uh, obscene. Yeah, so. That's you, what, 12%? Yeah, so you, you. Year over year? Yeah, what you're going to see. Um, and we'll, when, when we do this same drill next year, because we will, I think you'll see that percentage increase quarter over quarter, half that. In other words, you're, you're going to see back in the single digits, somewhere between 3 and 6%. That's historically where the year over year kind of goes. So you're just not going to see these double digit increases, but they will, inc it will increase. The, the, it's just like I said with the apartment, it's, it's economics 101. Yeah, we got there's no just, supply. There's, there's no supply. Uh, and I'm emphasizing this again for everyone that's watching. The University of Virginia this fall is admitting more students than ever in the history of the school. They're hiring more staff and the School of Data Science on Ivy Road is not even open yet. Wait till you see the impact of more students this fall at UVA, and wait till you see the impact of the School of Data Science on Ivy Road and what that's going to have on this community and its housing ecosystem. Oh, wow. Neil Williamson says this. Here's the penalty for loan fraud. He would know. He the penalties for a Class 1 misdemeanor loan fraud, 12 months in jail, potentially, and a fine of up to $2,500. Yeah. Well, we'll, 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 I'm sure folks are going to be reaching out to Virginia Realtors Legal to, to see if we're going down the right path or not here and, and, and definitely come up with some, I'm pretty sure, uh, some answers. And we'll, we'll, we'll report them back in once we start getting some information on that. But I just saw our unemployment uh, did pretty good. Yeah, unemployment numbers were fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Um, he, uh, Buchensky says, Michael you, Michael, you made the show better today. He, Thank you, uh, Michael. Coach Buchensky says, um, speaking of your Lake Monticello, the lots on either yeah, yeah, side, yeah. Mm -hmm. he says that is capitalism, which is awesome. It is your private land, and the rules allow you to do X, Y, and Z from a building standpoint, and you go for it. Then he yeah. says the NIMBY crowd is frustrating to say the least. Yeah, so this particular person has just been there for 25 years and, and got used to having lots on either side that they were using and, um, and not paying the taxes on. And, you know, in fairness to this person, did not have the fiscal ability to buy lots on either side two or three years ago. I mean, lots right now, Lake Monticello, if you can find one, or, you know, in the thirty, forty thousand, fifty thousand dollar range, unless it's waterfront, if you can even find one. Three or four years ago, it was half that number, and you know, you, you could have purchased them at that point. But that's double the due, triple the dues. You know, it's just when. The, but the point I was trying to make is, when when Fifth Street Station got built, this tr this movement out there was going to happen. Brian, we've lost out on three homes. And on each home, the seller asked to stay in the house for longer than 60 days. Yeah. We had to buy a home because our lease was coming up. After losing on the third one, we renewed our lease for another 12 months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, volume is going to be very different this time next year. I think volume is going. To, I think this trend of volume of sales will continue, continue along. But um, you know, we're we're gonna. Uh, we're going to report back and thank you for everybody for uh, making Smith squirm in his seat <laughs> today. But the 60-day thing is uh, we're going to have to dig into this a little bit more and report back to everybody. I'm excited about it. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, good show today. Um, lots at Lake Monticello, Kevin says. Yancey were $500 at one time. Oh, yeah, he's right. $500 lots. They would, they would uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. They would, uh, that, that's in the 70s. Uh, but in the, in the 80s, when I got there in 87, you can buy lots for three, four, five grand, easy, all day long. And now? Uh, 30, 40, 50 in that range, depending on where it's at. If, assuming you can even find one. 
these days. And that's part of, that's part of why to go back to what I prepared today for, <laughs> the, the uh, Fulvana County new construction, why this $95,000 jump on, oh no, I'm in trouble. No, Michael Buczynski just made me laugh. So, so get so, that man a strawberry daiquiri. <laughs> Who, me? I think he's talking about you. Uh, no, I do martini. Stop it. <laughs> Gin martini. Very dry. I love the viewers and listeners. Shaken. Buczynski cracks me up. Three or four olives in it. That's it. That's an easy guy. But look, to go back to, to the $95,000 jump in new construction, right? A lot of that is the dirt. Yeah. Oh, right. No doubt. A lot of that's the dirt, and well, the cost, and the of, cost of goods. Cost for new of construction. goods going up. So I think if you were to take a look at the builders' P and L statements, right, their nets about the same. So people thinking that they're making that extra hundred grand on that, they're probably spending between twenty five. <laughs> Sean, have Sean Tubbs really moved to another state? No, that's Sean just playing a little bit. Sean Tubbs, the dry humor does not always convey via comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can't. Facebook. He can't. He's got to be in person. And he's got to have that. He says, please report on the program that I've moved to another state. Details in today's newsletter. Uh, he, he very well might have. I don't think you've he's moved to been, another state, have you, Sean? He's, he's been talking about that for oh, I know quite, he some, has. quite some time. I know he likes uh, Vermont. Uh, uh, I think it'll be a, a loss for us if he does, but, you know, good for him if that's what he would like to do. Oh, dude, it's April Fool's joke. Oh, no kidding. Hancock County, he's your host, Tawn Subs. I, I now got the joke, uh, right. Sean. That's right. Today is April 1st, isn't it? The, 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 Sean, you know I love you, homie. You know I do. The dry humor does not convey via comments and Facebook. Um, but his community engagement uh, yeah. Substack is fantastic. Yeah. Town Crier Productions at Info Seville is just absolutely amazing. So this is the moment that we go, hey, the 60 days, April Fool's. <laughs> you wish. It is not. You wish. It is not. Jonas says the market will balance. Oh, she's 100% right. Hi, honey. How you doing? Um, Yona, I case? didn't figure out the April Fool's from Sean. Thank you, Yona. She says, she's saying Sean's doing an April Fool's joke. Did Yona figure that out? Yeah. God bless her. Right? And she says the market will balance. Yeah, well, it, 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 A, it will balance. B, it needs to balance, right? Um, but I, I, and I, and I mean this, th this time, <laughs> this time I'm trying to be serious, Mr. Yeah, Daniel Miller. McDougall says, get that man a beer. Daniel Pettit says, Keith, go out and run 10 miles. I did on, I did on Saturday. I did. No I ran a 10 miles. show would go this way. I did. I did. I did with only Three weeks of training, and to say that I'm a little sore would be an understatement. <laughs> the, Jerry noticed a little twinge I did before, and I went, oh. <laughs> I went You're oh. moving better. You're I less, am moving better. You're yeah. less stiff. You're more fluid with your gait today than when I saw you on Monday. Yeah, Monday was a rough day. Monday, Monday, Monday you were stiff a as a board. Monday was a rough day. I have to tell you that. Monday was rough, but it was, it was literally worth every step of it to, oh, hold, yeah. to hold my wife's hand, my daughter's hand. And Kelsey Schlein's hand to cross the finish line together. It was very much so worth it. That was a big thing for him. Yona's never ran. First of all, she was not a runner at all. Uh, and to train and be serious about this and run that. Um, love you, honey. That, that's, that is, uh, you're an awesome person. Um, good stuff today. I love everybody that watched the program. The show was on fire. Um, I have a feeling that this show will be played in... Uh, a handful of uh, brokerage offices. Well, I don't know. Week. I don't know about that, but I think I think I think some conversations are going to happen. That's yeah, for sure. I'm that's for sure. On no that, question on that, on about that. On that end of it, I know we're going to have a conversation with our team, our folks at Yes Realty Partners, to, to be a little careful about what we're doing on the buyer side and make sure we ask the right questions, um, since we now know that. You know, anything over 60 days, unless it's some special... It's no bueno, Chico. No bueno, Chico, which is going to make things even harder. Yeah. Um, I, think the, I think the amount of love coming through the, the, in, the, the cyberspace... The interwebs. The interwebs is, <laughs> is, is probably not high at the moment. <laughs> no way! Thanks, thanks, Smith. No, no. I take that... I disagree. I think what you did with your show today was helped a lot of people out. I don't think it's, it's, well, it's people are going to be sour. I think you offered clarity on something that no one knew about. Uh, well, uh, maybe not clarity, but I offered enough clarity that we need to start asking some questions and we need to get some legal beagles in here and, yeah. and figure out. Don't, don't play like that. You helped here. No. You know I always have your back. I, I, think you d I know you do. But actually, 
The viewers and listeners helped. Oh, dude. Yeah. Every time you, that's what I'm saying. Every time you do these damn things, it's like, you better be right. Oh my God. And it's like forever. I know. It never goes away. It, I was, it lives on the internet forever. Man, where was Trust I? Trust me. I, I know. I was somewhere, I was somewhere the other day and somebody pulled me aside. I think I was in Costco actually. Pulled me aside and yada, yada, yada. And, and said, you know, why well, I think I'm more than twice wrong. He goes, look, you weren't quite right on wow. the show. And I went, oh, so which show? And it was like a year and a half or two years ago. I I said, dude, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for making me better. Thank you for helping. But if you think I can remember what I did yesterday, you would be wrong. (laughs) You would be wrong. Forever. Yeah, I know. Forever. No. Um, Judah, you doing all right over there? (laughs) Yeah, poor poor Judah. I mean, what what are you working on over there? (laughs) You know, a lot of... Yeah, you know, that doesn't look like it over there. But talk about mu- multitasking. I no, that's talk about that's mu- not multitasking. Uh, I can't see him. You so. put the camera on a two shot and you leave it for ninety minutes. <laughs> that's what that's that's what's happening over there. Well, you know what? Okay. I love him to death. I would never. There's no case. Not flipping cameras. Here. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's I a could, two shot. I couldn't know. Um, hey, Judah, I love you, man. Yeah, he's the director. Keith Smith. The distinguished gentleman. I have to tell you, I do love Liza Moore, though. I'm just saying. <laughs> Jerry Miller, me. Um, and this is Real Talk, presented by Yes Realty Partners on the Isle of Seville Network. My friend, um, y- your phone is on fire over there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So Kevin Yancey just face- messaged me and said, yeah, one martini isn't going to do it. <laughs> your phone is on fire over there. Um, this was a fantastic you, program. You guys have a good uh, morning. The Isle of Seville shows up in 45 minutes. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.